Welcome to Open Relationships Transforming Together. I'm your host, Andrea Miller, and we have a super special episode for you today. I am joined by my son, Alexander Botnagar. He's 11. He's agreed to be my guest today. So my amazing team has cooked up, gosh, probably a couple dozen questions. We'll hopefully get through all of them. We haven't seen them. And so the plan is for Alex and I to ask each other the same questions. And in the spirit of opening up, we hope to open up and learn a little bit more about each other. And we hope for you watching or listening that what you get from this is a just a, a wonderful insight into a special relationship. And my hope is it will motivate you too to take some of these questions and ask your child or, or maybe your parent. Okay, Alex, I'm excited. Are you excited? Nervous, little, but yeah. A little excited and a little nervous. Do you want to ask the first question or should I ask the first question? Okay, so take it from the top and then we'll put the, we'll-, we'll Am I supposed to say? No, take it from the top. If you could make one law for the rest of your family to follow, what would it be? Only one? Only one. I want to make very, I want to make at least five. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not yet. If I could make only one law for our family and they had to follow it, God, that, that is a great question. I didn't come up with this. I would say that whenever anybody is feeling upset, that we all can instantly know what to do and help that person feel better that's my that would be my number one law can i give you two more <laughs> you're good at this okay so now you have to hand me that and i have to ask you alex if you could make one law for the rest of the family to follow what would it be um make the uh, faucets spew out coca-cola <laughs> And that's a law? How about that's a feature? It's, uh, it's a law that everyone has to um, make sure that they hire the people to make. In all seriousness, um, something close to what you were saying, like um, make sure that every time someone's feeling down or upset, that people, like other people, know what to do and how to make them feel better so that they don't feel kind of alone in what they're doing. Or yeah. Just being sad. I like that. Um, by the way, this episode is not brought to you by Coca-Cola, but maybe it could be. All right, now I have Coca-Cola to ask. Sponsor us. <laughs> Alex, what is your favorite thing about me? Probably how much love and care you uh, have for all of my friends and the rest of the family, and especially me. I mean, even when I'm being a pain in the butt, you're always like always so kind and so patient with me, even though when I even though I'm so annoying sometimes. So that's what, we, what I really love about you. Oh, thank you, honey. I appreciate that. I, I can't say that I'm always, <laughs> but I appreciate I appreciate the, uh, the sentiment. That's sweet. Okay, now you have to ask me. Um, what is your favorite thing about me? Oh, my God. There is such a long list. Do I have to just say one? <laughs> oh, gosh. I think the thing that I love most about you, Alex, is your big empathetic heart when um, people are upset you are so sensitive and so often i've been impressed by your maturity and thoughtfulness where you've just reached out whether it's to me or if uh, somebody is not well you've you've asked about them multiple times um you know at times you've been really extra thoughtful to your dad to your brother, um, and that that generous big heart is what I love most. But there's so much more that I love about you. Well, well, you who I got it from. So, <laughs> oh, that's sweet. What are three things I say a lot? Oh, good lord! Um, when I'm asking you to turn off a device or uh, stop Fortnite, um, you always ask for more time. But what do I say? Um, can I have five more minutes? Yeah. Okay. That's that's one. That's fair. Uh, what else do you always say? Mom, will you? <laughs> or mom, can I? Uh, can I have a friend over? Huh? Can I have a 
can I have five more minutes? Yeah, but it is a request. There are a lot of requests that you make. And then, um, oh, the one of the things that you say a lot to me, and even text, I wubu. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, you have to pass that to me. Okay. What are three things I say a lot? I mean, I know a lot of things you say. Not a lot, but I don't know a lot of things that you say a lot. Oh, time for bed. Well, that's a daily. Yeah, that makes sense. That's every day. Um, you shouldn't have screen time. <laughs> and um, how about did you brush your teeth? Oh, no. Instead of time for bed, brush your teeth. Did you brush your teeth? No more screen time. And probably uh, constantly telling me that you love me, which I really, just, which really makes me feel good about myself. Thank you, boops. Well, lick your finger. What is something you have learned from me? As I was saying earlier, what I got from you is uh, how to be super empathetic and really kind of experience how people are feeling when they're sad or they're not feeling great or they're sick or something. That's what I've learned from you, how to be a really like super empathetic and super uh kind of comforting because of what you've taught me well oh, that's nice thank you what is something you've learned from me i'm gonna say all that and since we've talked about your big generous heart how to be more curious and to have more fun i love it when you get excited about learning to make a new dish or um wanting to watch something on YouTube or there's something that you're delighting in and that you want to share it. So since I'm so often very focused on the next thing and getting something done, uh, you have taught me to slow down and to delight in something new and cool. And I love that. What specific emotion or feeling do you try to hide from me? I'm not sure you do hide emotions <laughs> from me, but if you do, I would like to know. Oh, uh, yeah. I think when uh, um, when I'm feeling worried, if, you know, I would want to protect you from that sense of feeling worried. You told me something a few days ago, which made me feel kind of And you didn't tell me because you don't want me to feel sad, which thank you for worrying about my feelings. What specific emotion or feeling do you try to hide from me? I don't feel, since you're my parent, I don't feel, really feel like I need to hide an emotion from you. Because, yeah, you've known me since I was, what? One. I have. So um, I don't really feel like I need to hide an emotion from you because you're uh, my parent. So, like, I can, I feel like I can talk to you about anything. No, that's nice. All right. Thank you. What can I start doing right now right to now. make your life happier? And do not say Coca-Cola coming from the faucet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like, hear me out, this is going to sound kind of dumb. But um, I feel like you could start playing some of the same video games I play so that I can, instead of playing video games when, while you're doing something else, we can play video games together and have fun. Or like uh, we, can, we sh uh, can start right now playing more board games so that, uh, like, because I know we both, well, I do have a lot of time on my hands. So, uh, yeah, if you would. I would love to play board games with you. Okay, that's I, I can do that. I'm I'm not sure that you want me playing Fortnite or Madden with you. Although you probably do because I want I want you to play Minecraft with me. Well then and then you can beat me because I'll be very, very bad at it. I know, Will I'll you teach, teach you. me. I'll teach you. Okay. All right. Let's see. What can I start doing right now to make your life happier? Well, you make my life very, very, very happy already. But <laughs> Oh my god, it's always with the but. If I could ask for one more thing. Green time. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's I a knew it. That's a given. Uh, it would be when I ask you to do something to to trust me and to know that whatever I'm asking is for your benefit and I'm not trying to be a, a pain in the neck and that, that you do it and we just can have a little more harmony and a little more efficiency. Yeah, I do think that I don't really listen to you a bunch, which I should start doing now. So if that makes your life happy, I'll start doing that. Okay, all right, you heard it here uh, first, folks. Um, here you go. Do you think 
we would be friends if we were the, if we were the same age. Why? Why not? Oh my God, we'd be such friends. I would be so happy to hang out with you because you're so smart and funny and cool and goofy and just and you really are a good friend. I you know I'm I'm grateful for all the good friends that uh, we have all gotten to know Toby and Wyatt and Blake and Reed. We have all these great friends. And it's such a delight to see these wonderful kids um, in all of our lives because you're such a good friend. So thank you for that. Do you think we would be friends if we were the same age? If you were 52? Oh, no, 52 or if, <laughs> if you, you if were I, 52. If, no, you were 11. I don't think we would be friends. Why? I mean, I mean, I know we share a lot of the same traits because um, I've learned a lot of the traits from you. It's just... um. The way I see it, I mean, like, don't think that we would be great friends because um, you've seemed to have a lot of different interests than me. If I started being less bossy and play more Minecraft, maybe? Play a little more football? Uh, none of my friends play Minecraft, but um, <laughs> it's, it's not really more bossy, but yeah. It's just I don't think I'd be great friends with you because um, you don't do a lot of stuff that I do. So that's all. Okay, well. But if it was just like a... If, like, you were living in another country, and I was like, yeah, I could be a friend from another country because we have, we have a bunch of, like, like not physical interests that we have shared in common. Why, in a different, why would that matter? Could we be pen pals? Pen pals, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Okay, do I go? I think I go now. Okay. What makes you awesome? Me awesome? Yeah. I don't think I'm awesome, but if... I did think I was awesome. I would think it's because of my... People keep complimenting my art skills, so probably eat that and um, not become great at them, but I can learn and get okay at hobbies pretty quickly, so. So your art skills, like your drawing and painting and like visual arts? Not mean? really my painting, but my drawing and coloring. Uh, I like. Awesome, okay. What do you, What makes you awesome? I think the thing that I do best is being a mom to two amazing boys. Even though I make a lot of mistakes, it is the thing that I am most proud of. And it is my greatest, if you will, accomplishment. And I always say, you and your brother are my little Buddhas. You've taught me so much. So I think what makes me most awesome is getting to be your and, and Nicholas's mom. When was the last time you cried? Tell me about it. Or you can say pass. <laughs> uh, when's the last time I cried? I cried probably about a month and a half ago when Dad and I got into an argument. And you guys were upset. And I felt really, really, really badly. And I don't cry very often. And you even remarked that that's probably the third time you've seen me cry. When was the last time you cried? Do you remember the last time you cried when you were sad or frustrated? Sad, probably when Dala died. Your grandfather, when he died, that was probably a couple, little over two years ago. Yeah. What do you love most about your life? Oh my gosh. I'm lucky to say there's so much that I love about my life. Starting with you, Nick, and Dad. Uh, the work that I do, I love a lot. I love my team. Um, my brother, my sister, my parents, you know, the, the people around me by, by times 10 and then getting to do my podcast, uh, getting to lead your tango and getting to learn. I learn something every day. I mean, I get to feel so much love and gratitude. So yeah, there's a lot to love. I'm, I'm really lucky. What do you love most about your life? What I love most about my life is how... Uh, everyone around me seems to care a lot about me. You, Sange, Dad, my brother, all my friends, Uncle Tom, and just like everyone who's like been in my life seems to care a lot about me and what happens in my life. So, all right, well, that's really nice. And Good. I also care about how Sange cooks the best food ever. And speaking of that, I'm starving right now. So, <laughs> three, you want to wrap it up? You want to keep moving? All right. 
what is the last thing I did that upset you? I haven't done a lot to upset me. Shall I try harder? Yeah, actually, um, so when you took my mouse, that was in the middle of the game. It was a few months ago, so not very recent, but I still remember that scarring night. So I, I'm in a good place with you? Okay. What is the last thing I did to upset me? Probably you say something like, I'm never fun. <laughs> I know, that's fair. I mean, uh, and when is you there anything it, wrong with telling the truth? <laughs> you probably said something like, um, I, not probably, you said something like, I'm never fun, I never do anything for you when you're frustrated, and you just threw out a lot of absolutes because you were angry. And it kind of hurts my feelings, so I try really hard. What is your favorite thing to do when it's just the two of us? Cuddle. Oh, and do Wordle. And play Connections. And play the mini crossword in the New York Times. And read. And ski. Read. Read. Read, definitely. <laughs> I like doing all those things with you. What is your favorite thing to do when it's just the two of us? Um... Probably, I like like watching TV with you. Yeah, as you said, I like cuddling with you. I mean, I like um, talking to you like about uh, some relationship problems that I have, or like something that like uh, I just like love having fun with you. Like if we play like a game or something. What are some things I worry about that aren't that deep? Some things. Oh my God, who wrote these? <laughs> Who wrote these? Who wrote these? Come on, man. Come on, guys. You guys can't do this to me. It's not that deep, Alex. It is, it is that cringe. Oh, got it a is big, a big, you know, thank you to my team uh -uh. because I know it's not that deep. This, these questions are that deep. Oh, my God. Okay, hang on. Ask the question again, Star. What are some things that I worry about that aren't that deep? Um, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I mean, I know this is probably a little meant to be a joke. I don't think there's, um, I, I think your concerns about trying new things, you, you have a valid concern that you're going to do something that you're not good at. Um, but I think even like some of the recent things you've tried, like basketball, um, when you didn't know, you know, if you'd make the team or how well you'd play, the fact that you did it anyway, I was really proud of you. Um, but I think you're feeling afraid of new things. That's not that deep. And I want you to keep trying new things and just saying, yeah, it doesn't matter. Because trying new things, new food, new sports, new games, that's how you discover. I'm never afraid to try new food. I love food. All food. And All food. shapes and size. Okay. Well, that's what I would say. All right. Um... What are some things I worry about that aren't that deep, Alex? Um, uh, my screen time. I worry about that, which is, it is not that deep. Uh, you don't really worry about anything that is um, not important because you know that it's not important. So nothing, really. Um, I wonder if, the, if this is meant to be a little bit of an ironic question where there are trivial things that I shouldn't be worrying, that I'm worrying about or that I'm harping on. And then when I you want to say, worry about it's it. just not that deep, Mom. I mean, I think, you know what, I wrote that question because I know you worry too much about um, my screen time. Okay, next question. Okay, next question. Keep moving. What is the best and worst part about getting older? Best part is that people actually listen to you and value your opinions and um, probably let you have an opinion about something. And the worst thing is that you're closer to not... Um, getting older and just going uh, six feet under. Yeah. <laughs> and turn, also you have responsibilities, become which very is very dark. Bad. It's become a very macabre uh, um, episode. You also, you, also have, uh, you also have responsibilities, so that's not good. I don't like responsibility. Oh, no. Um, so you feel like now that you're older, people are listening to you and valuing your opinion more, which more wasn't... I was, the, when I was like six or seven. When you were six or seven, no, nobody cared. They just thought it wasn't that deep. Yeah, but that's all my job. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna walk up and leave if you say one more cringy thing. What are the best and worst parts about getting older? Uh, best part is becoming 
um, less self-conscious, not worrying so much about what other people think. I feel uh, like some people worry about worry more about what other people think when they get older. Some, but I think like when people get into their teen phases, they start to get start getting worried. Yeah, maybe it gets maybe it it hits a high in your teen or twenties, but then when you turn thirty, and then when you turn forty, and now that I'm over fifty, every decade, I have felt a little um, less conscientious and a little bit more free to be who I am. The worst part is, I think, yeah, looking at your own mortality and recognizing it's the... It's not going to last forever. Mm-hmm. Well, not the people I love. I'm going to have to leave behind eventually. Um, but I, I also feel like in a lot of ways, like, my life has gotten so much better. So I'm, I'm embracing it all. What is something you wish I would do more often? Oh, uh, brush your teeth. <laughs> zing. <laughs> Why do you keep saying zing? <laughs> I don't know, because it's not that deep. <laughs> okay. What is something you wish I would do more often? Um, stop worrying about me. I feel like you don't worry about me a lot, but when you do, it's kind of about important things, but I just wish... Because I'm older now, and I have responsibility, so more responsibility than I did when I was younger. And I want, I wish you could stop uh, worrying about me. Do you feel like I worry about you a lot? A little bit, but I wish we could reduce it, because I know, because, like, I'm going to be sick. But, yeah. So don't worry about you. Worry about me a little bit. <laughs> Just the, the, uh, the optimal worry point is what you want. Okay. All right. Thank you. If you won a million dollars, what would you buy? Can I buy the U.S. health health system? Not for a million dollars, baby. But that's a good. That's a good. Um, I'd probably just pay for the people I love's health insurance until the money ran out, so that people could stay healthy. No, oh, that's really nice. Or you would also probably buy um, the what? <laughs> Okay, as long as it's not Coca-Cola coming from the You know, I'd buy a Coca-Cola faucet. Coming, coming from the faucet. And, uh, and more V-Bucks and healthcare if there's anything if left over. If you want a million dollars, what would you buy? Oh, my gosh. Now that you've said something so magnanimous, I was thinking uh, probably something a little more superficial. Uh, if I won a million dollars. An exterminator. <laughs> trying to get rid of these ants. Um, for a handful of people in our life who could use a little more financial assistance, you know, I'd provide it to them. And then, um, put, uh, a bunch in the bank for you and Nick, and then I'd put a down payment on a ski chalet. It's a ski chalet. A little, little ski, like a little condo up in the mountains. So we've got a a place to go skiing since that's one of my favorite Up in things Beaver to do. Creek, everything is so expensive on that show. Yeah, it would be it would be a teeny tiny. It would be a very small ski chalet. <laughs> when was the last time I apologized to you and made you feel better? Oh, uh, I think probably something relatively recently. You know, when maybe what I referenced a little while ago when you were feeling upset because I said no about something and um you know maybe you wanted fast food and I said no and then you told me I I'm never any fun I never do anything for you and then you went away to your room calmed down and then eventually you came and apologized that means a lot to me what is the one thing you would do if you weren't afraid that'd be more confident I guess sometimes I'm a little I'm a little less confident because I'm scared of uh, something bad happens yeah I think I would um be more confident because I have nothing to be scared of probably do some more thrilling things like uh maybe cliff jumping or have there been many occasions to go cliff jumping no but um or like maybe uh hang gliding or something something 
like okay. an like kind that of would give me an adre- adrenaline rush, yeah. Like bungee jumping or something. I already tried bungee jump. It was fun. I like the little mini mini bungee jumping thing. Okay. What is one thing you would do if you weren't afraid? You know, I uh, I feel like I've done a lot of things that um, have been scary to me. Uh, maybe ride a motorcycle. I think that would, yeah, I think I'd like to uh, ride a motorcycle. That seems solid. Thank you. Okay, I think it's my turn. What about me do you hope never changes? There are a lot of things that I hope don't change. I hope, one thing I do hope is that you get a good night's sleep tonight <laughs> because you're yawning a lot. Uh, but as far as what I hope doesn't change is your um, your big heart and your empathy and how much you care about people. Jill, what about me do you hope never changes? Um, there's a lot of things I hope never change about you as well. I mean, how, uh, how kind and like a kind like so persistent you are your goals and how like you'll never give up on something even if it takes a long time i mean there's a lot of things i mean i mean i hope that you stay an inspiration plus you're an inspiration for me probably a lot of people who are fans of you and your tango so i hope that you never like that you never give up on your goals like that you never you never give up on your goals and look where you are now Owning a company, living the dream. <laughs> oh, you're sweet. You, you see me as being pretty persistent. Yeah, and uh, inspiring, so. Well, thank you. That's really, really nice. Okay. If you could switch places with me for a day, what would you do? Spend as much money as I want. <laughs> I don't know what I would do. Drive to McDonald's? <laughs> I Come on, I, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't drive, so... Uh, well, but if you were me, that's oh, the point. Oh, probably DoorDash McDonald's. Probably DoorDash. <laughs> if you were me, you could DoorDash McDonald's. Well, good news is that you're not me, and that's never <laughs> Sorry, this is not sponsored by McDonald's. If you could switch places with me for a day, what would you do? They say get me straight A's in all my classes. <laughs> you do get straight A's. I'm proud of you for that. I think I would just love to spend a completely carefree day. Uh, like you're 11 again. Like I was 11 again. Just because you were 11. I was 11. And I remember having that feeling of being completely carefree when I was your age. And that's a joyful feeling. What do you need me to do when you are sad? Oh, I don't I have to like need, need you to do something. I don't know that that's the case. But it feels really good when I'm feeling sad, when you are paying attention, and just there to reassure me. What do you need me to do when you're sad? Uh, you already do this, but, like, not a lot. So, like, you know, give me, uh, give me some space. Let me cool off a little bit. So that oh, when you're sad or angry? When, we, uh, when I'm sad, kind of comfort me. I know you do that a lot, but, like, just like comfort me and um and then maybe just leave me alone for a little bit so I can cool off from being like sad for a while. So sometimes you like a little closeness when you're sad and other times you like a little distance to, to just kind of feel it on your own. Okay, that's good feedback for me. If you could change one thing about your life, what would it be? I don't really mean like a I mean, I have everything I could ask for. Great parents, a great brother, giant house, great friends. The opportunity to be able to um, uh, have things that others unfortunately can't. I mean, um, it's nothing I really wish I could change. Maybe um, Calhoun could come to college. <laughs> Your old school My in old New York. My old school in New York. Yeah, that was a great school. I agree. Not DoorDash McDonald's. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And also DoorDash McDonald's. <laughs> Well, that's never going to happen. Okay. If you could change one thing about your life, what would it be? Hmm. 
uh, probably fewer arguments with dad. And that's yeah. that's been the one area where I feel like it's been you know hard for him and me. And I know at times when we've argued, it's been hard for hard and scary for you and Nicholas. So that I, I, like with you, I feel like everything else is awesome. That's the one area that I I, I wish I could go back and wave my magic wand. When you describe me to your friends, what do you say? Oh my gosh, I am so lucky to be the mom of the coolest, most wonderful, smart, creative, fun, funny, cute, snuggly, big green, hazily eyed, gorgeous child. I'm I'm not big and green. <laughs> big green, hazily eyed. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're a super cool kid. Proud of you. Okay, when you describe me to your friends, which I'm sure you never do, <laughs> I can't imagine you've ever described me to your kids, but it, or to your friends. Kids, yeah. Okay. Okay. If you ever were to describe me to your friends, what would you say? Big, scary, <laughs> ogre, <laughs> blue-eyed, blue-eyed ogre, blue-eyed Shrek ogre. Um, kind of Shrekky. Kind, loving, nice, strict, kind of, not really. Um, uh, loving, if I describe you to my friends, uh, and then, uh, really worried about, like, worried about how much, not really worried, but kind of like, um, wanting to make sure that I don't become a failure. Are you concerned that I'm concerned that you're going to be a failure? Not really. You don't, do you feel like, do I give you those vibes? No. So, um. Trying to keep you on the straight and narrow. Yeah. Keep you, you off don't... the streets and out of jail. What is something that matters to you, but no one else in our family understands? Does that feel really that you don't, that uh, anyone else understands that I do? That's maybe, um. I don't really know. Maybe something with friends or with one of your hobbies or something with, like sometimes you really care a lot about getting to different levels with Fortnite. Cause if, if it's anything with the video games, I'm, uh, Nick probably understands it. So that's not my entire family. Oh, how about your parents? Uh, my parents probably, yeah, probably something with video games. Uh, because you take it pretty, you can take it pretty seriously. Take it pretty seriously. So um, maybe, um, the importance of uh, playing a game with a friend or finishing a build in Minecraft or do, yeah, do something. It's like pretty competitive and pretty important to you and you care a lot about it. What is something that matters to you, but, oh, yeah, to you, but no one else understand, in our family understands? I think it's probably to do with um, my personal journey my personal growth you know I think maybe dad understands it a little bit but not as much as he would understand it yeah I think you know I think he gets a, a degree of it but to the extent that there's a lot that I've struggled with that um is it's hard to know if you're not you you know what I mean so I think it's probably just what I've struggled with and and what I've overcome what don't I understand about what it's like to be you uh, I'm tempted to say what you, what you don't understand, but maybe you do. But the thing that, the first thing that comes to mind is how much effort I put in to you and our family, my work, my, you know, my broader family, the people around me, just really how I do very little, um, uh, I don't watch TV. I have very little hobbies. Right, I choose not to do a lot of those other things, so I can really put. You stick to what you're good at. Well, part of it is sticking to what I'm good at, but it's also putting as having as much bandwidth as I can to build something I'm proud of that helps people, and then to just have maximum bandwidth for um, the people around me. What don't I understand about what it's like to be you? What don't I understand about you? I mean, you probably do for sight to be me because at a point you were. The same age as me and you probably did experience some of the stuff I do. But maybe, uh, um, 
important it is, like, if I'm in the middle of a game with a friend, because especially Wade, who never gets on in Fortnite, how, uh, how, like, important it is for me to play a few games with him when, it, when he's usually never on. Okay. So is that, I think what I'm understanding a little bit better from you now is part of it is the um, accomplishment and competitiveness from building something and doing something well. And then it sounds like the other part is that it's a part of your social life and that's important to you. Okay. Well, that's helpful to know. All right. Now I'm asking the last question. Are you proud of me? Why? I. There's no words to describe how proud of you I am. You were a straight-A student in school. You, uh, you've accomplished your dreams. You, uh, you inspired millions, probably. Hundreds of thousands. <laughs> at, least, at least five people. <laughs> They're all in the house, and that's fine. Who's counting? Uh, you've um, changed people's lives. You've, um, I mean, I don't know what not to be proud of. Oh, thank you, honey. That means a lot to me. Can you get the Are last you question? Proud of me? Why? So proud of you. Super proud of you. Starting with what I've said previously, your just amazing amount of sensitivity and empathy is what I'm most proud of. I'm proud of how conscientious you are. You just got straight A's. You're really putting a lot of effort into um, into your schoolwork now and just your willingness. I remember a couple times when we were skiing and you really wiped out. I mean, one time when we were in Beaver Creek on um, Rose Bowl and you didn't see a bump and you went flying in the air. And you saw it. I saw it and I was too far away to do anything. I was, I was flying. Like and you literally flew through the air and the skis went flying. And I think a lot of kids would have said, that's it, I'm done. And we sat there and you recovered and you said, okay, let's keep skiing. And so your, your um, courage is something I'm really, really proud of. Thank you. And I love you. Love you. Oh, oh, we're going to the <laughs> All right. Thank you, Alex. Oh, you spilled oh, all of them. I know, I spilled. All right, well, Alex, we're going to wrap the show. Is there anything before we wrap up that you want to? Thank you for having me as a guest on your show. Do you want to come back? Do you want to answer another uh, two dozen questions? <laughs> All right. Maybe later. Maybe later. Maybe uh, maybe in another time. No, we'll, we'll definitely get you back on the show. There's so much more to talk about. I hope for all of our amazing audience that you have found this insightful and heartwarming and, and even inspiring to ask some or all of these questions to someone you love, um, your own child, a parent, um, somebody you care about. Happy Mother's Day, and thanks for tuning in to Open Relationships. We look forward to having you back for our next episode. Bye.